Very yes. important to be here next Sunday. If you're a partner with this ministry, very important. You're, you know, we got some things that we need, need to uh, discuss, tackle. Uh, no pun intended. Don't tackle Randy like he said, please. He's a sensitive guy. Uh, but uh, anyway, we've got some things we want to discuss and some business to take care of. So next Sunday will be a business gathering. Um, it will not be will, <laughs> will not be televised. Some of y'all have to understand why I hesitated on that one. The revolution will not be televised. Gil, Gil Scott Heron. Uh, anyway, no, never mind. Anyway, so it won't be televised for because it's business and it's personal. So uh, whatever we do, we're going to do it in house and take care of it. But it's going to be good. A lot of change is coming. I can assure you that. Anyway, 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 so the business at hand is the word of God. I have, um, you know, we had, he and I had talked uh, about coming. We've known each other all of our lives. <laughs> and, you know, he's, he's uh, older than me, but I'm taller and look better, but I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> I'm Anyway, anyway, that's for debate, and, uh, you know, he'll, he'll get me later, but uh, that's what baby brothers can do, but baby brother right now has the mic. He'll have the mic in a minute, but anyway. Uh, but he was my first uh, real shepherd, my first real pastor. Many of you know that, that have been here, and uh, my, my, the, first, the best thing he ever did to me was introduce me beyond teaching me, beyond inspiring hunger in us, my wife and I, and bringing our f family into divine alignment with the will of God. Um, he handed me a tape one day, a cassette tape back in the day, back in 1991, and I was in need of something, and I had no direction. I was on my way to hell fast, and um, God always has a plan, though. Can you say that? God always, come on, say it with me, God always has a plan. Don't you ever think you're backed into a corner and you don't know how to get out? God is right there. And so he was there in the form of this, this man of God. And I remember the first, first message I preached under his ministry. He was the one that uh, you know, brought me into ministry and then ordained me, uh, my wife and I. And uh, I said, can a brother be a father? You know, can a brother be a father? You know, and that was the concept that hit my heart. And he fathered us and shepherded us and, and uh, just treated us good. And, you know, I know he hated when we left, but... <laughs> He told me that, so I know. <laughs> I hate to see y'all grow. But, he, but see, what happens is when you cause people to grow, you should expect them to go out. You know, it's one thing to grow in the house, but, you know, everybody, look, everybody in here has some type of ministry in you. And you need to be finding out what that was. And we, we began a, a journey and a quest to find out what the Lord had for us under his uh, original teaching. He had me a ta tape one day by Brother Kenneth Copeland. And I'm going to tell y'all something. I'm going to say this because I can. Y'all need to stop believing the lie that's going around about Kenneth Copeland, Gloria Copeland. If you believe it, I'll talk to the audience. If you believe in that trash, my wife and I have had personal encounter with them and have had opportunity to be close to them. It is not true. I'm just telling you. All this foolishness, it is a tool of the enemy to try to divide the body of Christ. So just check your sources. Stop believing everything. The Internet lies Social media lies, anyway, but the word of God stands true. Uh, I'm not going to try to introduce him any more than what he is. He is the father of that young man back there, J.T. Roberts, you know, who has a long history. Would you stay? Yeah. <laughs> he ain't his no more. He, he's, he's only his by birth, okay? That he is, but he serves in this house. We're delighted he's here. Ladies and gentlemen, would you stand on your feet and welcome the man of God, minister of, of the Lord Jesus Christ, Apostle Walter Roberts, my brother, his father, and just to look, you know the deal. <laughs> Have your way. One, two, three. Somebody say glory. glory. You can be seated. Praise God. You can be seated. Wow. Uh, for the record, his name is James Thomas Roberts III, son of Walter Roberts and Regina Roberts, born December the 5th, 
1991 at 9 p.m. in Presbyterian Hospital, Charlotte, North Carolina. I know because I was there. I watched him come out. <laughs> and I took pictures too. <laughs> Say man, somebody. But he grew up. <laughs> and in growing up, he was taught the ways of God. And he had watched and he observed. But I didn't give him his heart. God gave him his heart. You, if, you, if you don't know that young man is a man full of love, you don't know him. He has been that way since he was a child. I tell you, he was so full of love as a, as a little child. I had to hold his hand all the time in the store because he loved everybody. Brother Mike, he, he reminds me of you right now because the heart of love in him, I, I see you and I see him in you. I see that love because he, he never knew a lack. He didn't know people didn't love you. At four years old, we were walking through a Kmart, and uh, the other, his brother and sister were in school, and, and uh, excuse me, I'm about to cry myself. And uh, we were, uh, thank you, sir. You know, he was, walking be he was walking beside me. I was pushing the cart, and uh, he said hello to everybody. You know, he was a cute little guy, you know. My kids were always cute when they were little, you know. <laughs> I'll, leave it to, I'll leave it to the men and women they encounter as they grow up to describe any of that now. <laughs> but <laughs> he was a cute little fella. And uh, so when he'd say hi to people, people say hi back, you know. It was just genuine. He always, you know, and I was like, dog, I'd say hi to him. He's a good-looking little guy. And uh, as a matter of fact, him and his brother looked like my brother and I, if you ever saw a picture of us, and the one family picture of all the kids that my parents had taken of us, and uh, I had my little six shooters, and he wasn't doing well that day. You could see it in his face, but they sat us up, both in a chair. That's how small we were. Both of us sat in a chair in the living room, and the rest of the sisters and brothers were around us. And uh, and I looked at that picture, and I could see my kid, my two boys in the, in that picture, uh, but. Uh, he said hi to a man as a man walked by, and the man just looked at him with kind of a scowl. And uh, I didn't say anything to him, you know. I, I didn't want to rise up and get, you know, you know, I was a father. You know, I could have said, hey, man, why don't you just say hi to my son, you know. <laughs> he, you know, but I didn't do that. I just, I just uh, watched him walk by, and JT turned to me, and he said, Daddy, he didn't say hi. And, he's, and you could see the pain genuine pain in his face and then I wanted to cry and I said well son not everybody believes and feels like you do and and I believe God began to grow him from that point on because that was the first time he had ever encountered a bad attitude you know because he was giving out a good attitude come on somebody when you give out good you expect to receive good amen and as a child he did that so that's my son <laughs> now, um, he got an emotional father. I, you know, my, my family used to make jokes about me, you know, and he was talking about emotions of, of the Roberts men. Um, now, I can't speak for everybody because I don't understand everybody. <laughs> I got brothers and sisters I don't understand. <laughs> just, just to be honest, you know, and, and everybody <laughs> say, doctor, you I ain't going to go there with anybody else. I'm going to let y'all speak for yourselves. But, you know, the Bible says, if it be possible, as much as lieth in thee, live peaceably with all men. So somewhere along the line in my adult life, I realized the best way to live peaceably with all of my brothers and sisters was to keep my distance. <laughs> You know, my mom and dad used to say, y'all need to see each other more, do more. I was like, mom, you don't understand. You raised us. We're not all the same. We didn't grow up in the same uh, era that you did. And everybody got their own mindset, their own thoughts. And, and so, you know, we love everybody. But I love for my oldest brother to stay in Atlanta. <laughs> Superintendent Roberts, if you're watching me, God bless you in the ATL. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Same with everybody else. We, have, we are so spread out. 
You know, when I got to California, my our second oldest brother, uh, Elder Larry Roberts, was already there, assistant pastor of the church there in, in uh, San Jose. And uh, I'm like, wow, you know, he's in California. Got uh, my sister Cynthia never left New York. She's always been in New York. Uh, and then I got several that uh, had something to say to me because they came to North Carolina while I was there, and they're still there, and I'm gone. So, uh, <laughs> sorry, did you have to do what God says? If God didn't send you there, I I have no control over that. But I know God sent them, but they didn't stay. God sent them somewhere else. And as we're going to talk about something like that today, I honor you. Uh, yeah, I love this place. Love love my family. Hey, mom, how you doing? You know, appreciate that. Thank you, my bro. Appreciate that. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm actually surprised. I'm, I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm rolling here. I got to get rolling. I've been here in a while. Uh, I'm actually surprised I can look as good as I look right now because <laughs> I didn't have any clothes to wear. <laughs> you know, I was pu- pulling things out of the closet I didn't know was in the closet at JT's. And, you know, it's like, wait a minute, I can wear this. And I can wear that. And then I pulled this plastic bag out full of ties and you know what I have this tie for 15 years and I still had the tag on it never wore it I'm gonna wear it today put that blue in here with a little bit of brown and brown in the shirt I think I can match somehow glory to God somebody say glory <laughs> now if you'd have seen what I was gonna wear even though your pastor said ah oh, just come you know okay I'm like that I'm not that guy I'm not, God knows me, you know, I'm not that guy. Now, this doesn't fit exactly like I want to fit, but I'm not the guy that I would have been if I'd have came the other way. I'm like, Lord, you got to do something for me. <laughs> so, so we praise God. Let me say this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step into something else. <laughs> She's laughing. Uh, okay, I have to be careful looking at you all, too, because you, when you all are going and you're responding, I, then it triggers something, and then I'll get off. I'll get off what I'm, planning to do and hear immediately what I see in that moment and you know you gotta kind of sometimes I gotta kind of look down not look at you you know not that I'm scared of you but I just know it'll get me off track you know say say amen Dr. Marsha amen amen Dr. Marsha she's she's an open book you you all can I can I tell you something about prophecy about the the office of the prophet when, when you're ministering, when Holy Spirit's ministering, Holy Spirit's going to lock on to what you're giving out. If you're releasing, he's, he's ready to release to you. If you're receiving, he's ready to release to you. Let me say it like that. And if you're open to receive, he's open to give. And so I have many times had my whole message just, just close the book and he say, okay, just give it to him. And I'd be like, but you know, I, I spent all this time. <laughs> this is, I, I, I prepared. You know, I know you spoke to me. Because I wrote down, I wrote, it's together. Let me tell you how together it was. I was up all night. I woke up about 8 o'clock last night. I've been traveling. And, uh, you know, glory to God for everybody. If, I, if, if you feel like I'm off track, but just, hey, hello to everybody. God bless you. I love you. Uh, but but, <laughs> but I, I was traveling all day Friday. I was so tired. I'd been up mostly all night, Friday night into Friday evening. And when I went to sleep, when I, I had not slept like that in years, years. The, the proof that I needed it is in my face. I have had, look, I'm 60 years old, y'all. I have completed 60 years in the earth. I'm in my 61st year of living. I got acne. What's up with that? What is up with that? I have gained 20 pounds in the last two months. What's up with that? It's called stress, y'all. And there's a chemical given off called cortisol, you know, and all that. And it, it, it'll affect your body. And my body has been affected by the things I've been dealing with. And whether you understand it or not, I can be full of the Holy Ghost and still deal with things. That's what life is about. That's why a lot of people don't understand Christianity. You know, like, oh, they get the wrong teaching when they give their life to the Lord. Now, they give their life to the Lord because they have had an undeniable experience with the isness of God that is able to sustain you through any present or future difficulty. Glory to God. If you have not had an undeniable experience with the isness of God that is able to sustain you through any present or future difficulty, you have not got to know God. That's how you're saved. That's how you stay saved. Because you need that kind of experience to endure the things that happen to you in life. 
because it rains on the just and the unjust. All of us are going to go through something, but the difference is we have something on the inside that helps us live on the outside. Oh, glory to God. All right, I can be cool, calm down. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so, in the process of living, we face challenges. You know, it doesn't always work like we thought it would work. You know, we have a mind, you know, of this is, you know, it's supposed to work this way. It makes sense to work this way. But how many of you know God does things that don't always make sense to man? His ways are not our ways. Huh? His thoughts are not our thoughts. And then he says in other words, his ways are beyond our thoughts. We, we, we can't find him out. Because you know what God's going to always do is put you in a position and try to keep you in a position where you need him. If you think you can live in a relationship with God and you don't need him, you don't have a relationship. What's the point? You know, a lot of people live their lives without God. And they won't tell you the truth most of the time, but they deal with issues. Issues. They might have money, but they got issues. I'm looking at this man right here. What's your name? Bob, you've had issues, haven't you? Ha! But you, know, but you know what God said to me right now? He is the God for your issues. He is the strength for every decision you still have to make. Not only that, he is positioning you for an open door that is ahead of you. He said, don't get off the path that you're walking on. Because the path you're walking on is about to lead you into a door that's going to change your life forever. You're going to step into an encounter that we call networking with some people who are going to do some things for you in business, hallelujah, that you didn't even see coming. But because of the gift of God in your life and the skills that you still have yet to tap into, God is going to position you for greatness. Somebody say amen. amen. Watch it happen. If it doesn't happen, you tell them Walter Roberts lied. Tell them. I know prophets did lie. I know prophets lied about the election, but let me not go there too far. <laughs> you, you can't say one, 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 one thing and it don't happen, and you can You got to at least say you missed it. I'm, I, I'm Apostle Roberts. I'm Bishop Roberts. I, I can do this here. I'm just telling the truth. If I'm telling, if I'm not telling the truth, then then you know deal with me. You might not like what I have to say. You know I don't always like what I have to say. Because I asked God not to have me say anything about the election. I did. I did. I said, Lord, I don't know you're going to talk about the election. Because I know a lot of people. I have networked and connected with a lot of people, have been. I cut some ties. I only cut ties, not because people maybe not, are not called of God, but because you won't own up to it. Just own up to it. We all miss it. We're not perfect. We see through a glass darkly. Our, our, our hearing and our seeing is affected by our flesh. So when I'm ministering, I got to make sure, excuse me, I got to make sure I'm spending time with the Father, with, in Holy Spirit. That's why I was up all night, you know, because I just dealt with a whole lot of stuff to get here. Then when I wanted to stay awake and kind of plan my, my day for yesterday to get ready for today, even though I was thinking, you know, along the lines, okay, I'm going to speak when I get there, uh, my body said, no, you're going to sleep. And I slept. <laughs> Glory to God. And when I got up about 8 last night, I was up all, I've been up ever since. Glory to God. Now, you may see some redness in my eyes if you're close enough, but I looked at that this morning and said, well, Lord, I'm not really tired. You know, maybe my, my eyes need to rest, but I don't feel tired. I was hyped, man. I was hyped. So I was hyped. I was hyped enough, uh, listen, hey, <laughs> I was hyped enough, bro, to, to, to come up with a whole nother message. I, I got it, because we talked about love, weren't we? And I got a message that's called the love of God. Unlimited, all-reaching, unconditional, all-inclusive, ever committed to challenge. That's a message right there. And I got it put together right here. I said, I can preach that. You got up, and you started talking about tithing. You started talking about being purposed. 
and hearing God, and the Lord said, preach this. I said, God, don't do this to me now. Because <laughs> I was afraid you all were going to get done with what you were doing before he finished giving me every, he downloaded into me. <laughs> I was like, man, I've been doing this long enough. I wasn't going to argue with him. I was like, just not right now. Let me just preach that. Because it'll fit what he's been preaching. <laughs> You're not helping me right now. <laughs> See, I'm used to her. <laughs> but this one over here, she, she wasn't, she was just, in, just, just, yeah, instigating. That's the word, instigating. And I love y'all. I love you all. I, I just, this place would not be the same without you. Yeah, 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 no, Robin, I know. Okay. <laughs> so let me tell you what the, the subject is going to be. Is prepared, purposed, and empowered to fight and to win. Now. Prepared, purposed, and empowered to fight and to win now. We can't win tomorrow. I don't want to win next year. We're going to win right now. Somebody say glory to God. So there goes the, the, message, the message I have written. I don't know if I'll ever preach it. I've got several like that, you know. They're kind of filed away. When am I going to preach this? I don't know. May not ever preach it. But I, writ, I, I wrote down what he said. But Randy, I, I wrote it down. Yeah. Glory to God. What'd you say? I said it built you up, but it oh. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank, yeah, thank you, thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah. That works for you? Okay. Gotcha. He could have let me sleep, is what he could have done. He could have let me sleep and give me this when I got here, right? Because that's when I got it. <laughs> I got a story, all right. Oh, I've got a story. <laughs> you don't want my story right now. That's a, you know. But we go through things. Doesn't matter, you know. Doesn't really doesn't matter when we come into the kingdom. But we got to be taught right. And and right teaching helps you live right. And when I was growing up, we talked about living right. Most of the folks were talking about. Things you don't do. You know? You live right. Got to live right. If I live right, heaven belongs to me. That was just the song we used to sing. If you live right, you know. But the definition of living right is subjective. It's subjective. Eric, I feel like preaching right now. No, y'all don't want me to preach right now. I got to tell you. I got to tell you something. Gotta make sure you get something to take home with you. Oh, you see, if I, that's why I'm glad I don't have that mic. When JT got this mic, I said, "Thank you, Jesus," because you know what happened the last time that you know I was supposed to use this mic, but it didn't work. And it was supposed to be the good mic. And I was like, "Wait a minute now," and they gave me that mic, and I was like, "Ah, yeah, I know what happens. It's the toy of the preacher," you know. Mm, yes. <laughs> it just happens now. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> but with this mic, I can walk and talk. Glory to God. And I can look at my notes and hallelujah. So, thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit just switched me back to a way he wanted me to go. So I'm going to even deal with something else I want to do. But, that, but the hand of the Lord is on your life. Hand of the Lord is on your life. I don't know how long you've been here. Uh, I know I saw you last time, didn't I, when, when Dr. Savell was here? That was the first time I met you. But when I stepped in to this zone, I saw God reaching to you. And, and right now, I feel, I really feel, this is what I feel, I feel Holy Spirit beginning to lift you. Glory to God. There's a diligence about you. There is, there is a passion that's growing in you, glory to God. And that passion is going to carry you through some, through some difficulty. Where you're going is not going to come without challenge. But you've got to have that experience, that undeniable experience 
But the isness of God, the Bible says in Hebrews 11 and 6, that without faith it is impossible to please him, but he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And once you have an experience with his isness, it should sustain you through any present or future difficulty. See, I've had experiences. I haven't had just one experience with God. I have had experience and another experience and another experience. And you know what? And I've had another challenge and another challenge and another challenge. But I'm here. Yes. Yes. Glory to God. I'm here. This man came and picked me up off the floor in 2016, November of 2016. I had just preached here in, in the other church in August at the, at, the, at the power conference, one of the greatest messages I felt like I ever preached in my life. Then in November, he had to come pick me up off the floor because I went back to the floor. I was on the floor before I came to preach. Dying. Dying. They came and picked me up off the floor, and I didn't care. I, I didn't care. They were just going to take me. JT and TJ, they just put everything, did whatever, put stuff in storage, got stuff together, you know, and I didn't even know she was out there in the, in the, in the vehicle waiting and all this, and, and they just put me in the car and said, okay, that was the worst ride I'd ever had in my life because you couldn't put enough cushion on me on the road because everything hurt. I had tumors everywhere, and every time anybody touched me or I moved, it was painful. It was extremely painful painful and I have scars now to show you how much cutting they've done on my body but you can't see it now because you know I got some clothes on you know you you can't tell unless I tell it it was so bad that when the doctor came into the emergency room all I wanted was some pain pills he'll tell you I just said give me some pain pills because y'all can't deal with me and Dr. King was her name and she said, well, you got to open that, that hospital gown so I can see it. And I said, you don't want to see this. You had never seen it. She said, oh, I've heard that before. I've seen it all. And I said, well, can they at least turn away? Can, can you at least have them go, she said, go out or turn away? I don't want them to see how bad this is. She said, yeah, they can turn away. So I guess they turned away. I don't even remember. But when I opened the, count, the gown, her mouth dropped, literally. Her eyes got wide. And she said, oh, my God, I've never seen that before. And she rushed out. And when she came back, two other doctors came with her. And from that moment till the time they got through with, their, with the 17th, the 15th surgery, they were working on me. They didn't even let me go home. They just started and kept going and kept going, kept going. And some of you might remember how I used to come in with my arm in a sling and, and different, you know, ways. And I stayed out. I wouldn't even, I'd be in the building over there, but I wouldn't come down because I was recovering from surgeries. You know, you go through challenges. But I still had to love God because I had an experience with God. I had, I had personally had an experience. You didn't have to tell me. I, I walked with him. I experienced legs being healed through an offering. Oh, that's what I was going to tell you. The Holy Spirit just brought it back. Do you know, do you know for y'all, for history's sake and for knowledge's sake, let me tell you something. Tithing didn't start with the church. Tithing was a custom of the time. God didn't, the church didn't institute tithing. Church didn't ask for your money. That didn't start tithing. They used to bring tithes for kings, you know, uh, other parts of the empire. They'd come and bring a tithe. They'd come and sow a seed, you know. And let me tell you something about tithing. There were three things the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, say this about tithing. I just thought he was going to move me on beyond it. But let me tell you this. The second thing is tithe is money. Tithe is increase. Tithe is not your time. It's not, it's not your effort. It's not. Not in the Bible. You don't tithe your time and say, I've given my tithe. No, that's not what that's talking about. First fruit of all your increase. You, you know, they're not adding more time to the day. I just dealt with a brother who, who you know, I just came from North Carolina. And I dealt with a brother who, who said, you know, God wants 10% of your time during the day. I said, that ain't, that ain't word, brother. I said, that's not scripture. You can think that. You can give him that. Go ahead. If you got two, what, two hours and however many, you know, how, four, what's the four hours, the tenth of four hours, you know? You know, if, is it two hours and 40 minutes? Well, I'll let you, I'll say amen to it if that's what you say. But if you got that much time to give him, you know, I'd give him my whole day. The Bible says men ought to always pray and not to faint. 
So I'm praying in the spirit all day because I learned that's the easiest way and it's the highest form of prayer anyway because the devil can't get into my prayer language and into my life because he lost the ability to understand heavenly language when his butt was kicked out of heaven. He lost this connection. That's why he only responds to what either he knows you used to do or what he's anticipating you might do. He don't know what you're saying when you're praying. He could break it or go by the end and they case out. He don't have a clue. He's like, would you please stop and go back to talking in English? I remember the first time. Am I okay? Thank you. I remember when we were in East Spencer. I don't know if you were there. You remember when Otis Lockett came and did a revival for us? Okay. <laughs> I was so honored. Okay. Many of you will, will know Otis Lockett till you get to glory. But uh, one of the most powerful men of God that ever entered my life was a great friend, a great mentor, and he treated me like I was his brother. Just just great man. And he said to me, you know, people don't like the fact that you and I talk. I'm just telling something now. I'm telling it for your benefit. Pe people, people don't like it. We sat there one night during that revival. We went to eat one night afterward. And, and he said to me, he said, he said, and I asked him, I said, why are you here with me? I said, I know that folks have told you stuff about me, so why are you here with me? They were lying, but, you know, they had position, you know, and they, they knew him, you know, and they felt like they were bigger knowing him, and he was big time, so why would he be with me and I'm little time? Well, I wasn't really little time, watch this, because I was the, the, the general secretary to the chairman of the board of bishops of the Church of God in Christ, so I was higher than the man who was talking about me. But he was older than me, and <clears throat> I went to his church when I was at Wake Forest. So he figured he had authority over me, which he didn't have. But I never, I never ran him down, never talked about him, even though I knew stuff. And sometimes, you, sometimes this, is, this, is, this is, I feel this right now. It's all coming together. That's why I had to teach that other stuff, give it that other stuff. That's why. Because that's what love does. Love keeps your mouth shut. I won't call his name, but you, you know, some people don't know who I'm talking about. I can only be one man if you know him, if you know what my life has been like. So that's fine. But I ain't lying on him. Okay? But love would not let me tell Pastor Lockett anything about it. I never brought it up. I just said, why are you here with me? In this little town, in this little church, and I had already pastored one other church in New York, and I still didn't know what I was doing. Are you know what I'm saying? Just because I was there didn't mean I knew what I was doing, you know. And he said, here's, he said, here's what you can be assured of with me. And I thank God. One of the things that I heard a, a preacher say years ago, he said, one of the things you want to do is live a life that when, even when you're not around, people give thanks for you. People give thanks for meeting you. People give thanks for the impartation and the seed you've sown in their life. It makes a difference. I said, God, I thank you for the interaction I had with Otis Lockett. Glory to God. Because Part of who I am now came from my interactions with him, you know, going to his church on Thursdays, you know, driving just to be in his Bible study so I could receive. And, and like, you, like you guys go, you go to receive. Man, I knew there was nobody bigger around there for me to go to. I just drove to Greensboro, man, sit up in his church. He'd be preaching. He'd look back in the church and he'd keep, start preaching, keep walking back to me. He'd get back to me and say, is that what you preach it, Pastor Roberts? I said, yes, sir. I didn't even know he had seen me. I was like, okay. Next time I got there on Thursday, they were waiting on me and they pulled me up to the front. So you don't sit in the back, you sit in the front. I'm like, I don't care where I sit. I just want to be in here and receive. You know, it didn't matter to me. You know what I'm saying? But he told me that night, he said, your relationship with me will never be impacted by somebody else's thoughts concerning you. Somebody else's issue concerning you will never impact me. Oh, glory to God. I looked at him, I'm like, wow. Because he wasn't like the other preachers I had tried to get away from. I don't want to be around y'all because y'all got issues. Y'all said you preach love. But then you run each other down. You preach love, but you're not really loving people. Watch this. He said to me, he said, I'll find, he said, I would find out who loved me if the report went out that I killed somebody and who stuck with me. He said, and they found out it was true. Would they still be my friend? That's love. 
Oh, we don't think that's love. No, you better stay away from him. He's a murderer. No, you don't know the circumstances. You don't know everything going on. And that's what we do with people. You know, we say we don't judge, but we interact with people based on what we have seen or heard, huh, or what we think. Not with what God said. Oh. And so he said, you ain't got to worry about it. He said, I will only react to you and interact with you based on you and me. He said, we're good, we're good. He said, but I won't allow you to impact my relationship with them either. Wow, I felt that. I was like, man, that's strong. He said, I may not agree with what they say about you, but I'm still going to deal with them based on what I deal with with them. Are you know what I'm saying? Doesn't mean I got to stop dealing with them. Just means they can't impact me and you. How many of us can live that way? Somebody else can't impact me and you. Watch this. This is what I wanted to say, and I got, I got more to say, but I, got, this is, I wanted to say this for a long time. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. Hallelujah. Or is it 10 and 2? Anyway, somebody will find it. But I can, I'm going to tell you the basic of it because I'm not going to turn there. Glory to God. It might be 2 and 10, but he says, Paul talks to the church there at Corinth. Man, God, help me to get through this. I don't want to take all day, but I show him I'm loaded now, boy. I tell you what. I've been, I've been in stasis for two months. Y'all don't understand. Uh, Glory to God. I've been challenged. Stress has been wearing me out. Woo, but I'm ready to kick the devils behind a little bit right now. Glory to God. If I can share something that can impact you, something that can help you to grow or make a difference in your life, then I have been successful. Glory to God. But, it, but he says there, uh, he talks about, when you read this, the, the chapter, he talks to the Corinthian church because they were sending reports to him, and he wrote them a letter back. They were sending reports about the fact, and I'm going to say very, very succinctly what happened was, there was incest in the church. That's what was going on. And these folks felt like, well, this guy needs to be put out. You know, he got to go. And Paul said, well, you got to walk in love. God loves everybody. <laughs> can I tell you, can I say that again? God loves everybody. Remember, if you remember last time I got to preach on a Sunday morning last year, was it last year? Um, the Lord gave me a message called You, Me, and the Gospel. And one of the things that the Lord dealt me about, and he's dealing with me about now, because i got a prophetic word to share with you uh, concerning what's coming in 2021 and beyond. But one of the things the Lord said to me was, do you really love everybody? Can you minister to everybody? Can you use the gospel to bless anybody, or do you pick and choose? Okay, let's get real. How many of you would minister to gay people? Follow what I'm saying? You know, could you interact with them? Can they sit next to you in church? Oh, they will, what do you mean? I've had them do that. Listen, I was on the phone. I was working a job in North Carolina some years ago, and I was on the phone one night with one of my partners. She's still, she's, she's a, like an administrator for a lot of things I do in ministry when I get to travel, with, you know, without the COVID-19 stuff and all that. You know, I would have been traveling more this year or last year, but uh, God knows, so, you know, I'm not, hey, it's cool, you know. But she handles a lot of that. She, she does a lot of the uh, coordinating for that. But she's been in my life a long time, you know. And so she called me one night, knowing I was working at night, so, and it was a free, free type of situation where I was, look, I was the supervisor. There wasn't nobody messing with me, you know. I, you know, I was good. I was, well, I was an armed officer. So there wasn't nobody really going to mess with me because I was a black man with a gun. <laughs> yes, sir. Legally, too. Hallelujah. <laughs> So, so, anyway, she called me, and the guy that I used to work with, he loved when I, when I would be scheduled for that, for that building, because I ran, I, I covered, the lady had uh, three sites, and I was responsible for making sure there was coverage, she had officers at whatever site, and that night I was there, uh, and, uh, and it, was a, it was a part of the county that was largely Caucasian and largely Republican. Does that make sense to y'all? Okay. Now, yeah, I know people say, well, why do you call Republicans? Well, I'm just telling you. You know, Republicans and Democrats don't get along, and most of the time in that area, whites and blacks don't see eye to eye. You know? So, so we were, oh, man, you don't know what you just said, because I sure feel something right now. 
But, but we were used to dealing with each other. This brother was gay. Straight up flaming. Okay? He didn't mind admitting it. He was proud of it. And he knew I was a bishop. And he liked talking to me. Because I don't talk like everybody else. I've heard that so many times. You don't talk like most preachers. I don't know. You know, you don't preach like, what? are you sure you're a preacher? You know, I hear that all the time. <laughs> hey, brother, test, test it by my spirit. Is there a witness on the inside that there's something different about me? If you don't have a witness, then you better leave me alone. Glory to God. He said, no, you for real, because, you know, he, he tried to make sure I was real. I'll let that go over your head and keep on going. But anyway, he's one of my friends on Facebook. He and I got along. He made me laugh. I make him laugh. I was like, yo, bro, you don't care what you do. You know, I love women, and that's the end of the story, man. I don't care what you say. <laughs> you know, I was, I, I'm a male that loves a female. I ain't mad at you. You do you. Because, see, what I learned is, I learned as a young fellow growing up, I'm not going to run you away from listening. I don't want you to close your ears from the possibility that God might say something through me that can touch your heart. But I know that in order for you to receive what I say, you got to receive who I am. But come on, y'all ain't getting that. People will not receive what you say if they don't receive who you are. If they think you are against them, if they think you are their enemy or you got biases against them, they won't hear nothing you got to say. And that's what most sinners think about the church. Most sinners think the church is anti-sinners. Well, then who are we going to preach to to get saved? So can we preach to anybody? Can we love everybody and anybody? God loves everybody. He loves Democrats. He loves Republicans. He loves the people who stormed the Capitol a couple weeks ago. He loves them. He loves folks that march for Black Lives Matter. He, he loves the folks that shoot each other in Chicago. He, he loves the folks that stay away from each other for COVID. He loves them. He loves all of us. And there's nothing any of us can do to change that. He's going to love us. And I promise you, when you get to, I hope you get to, the other side of eternal uh, presence of God, Huh? And not eternal separation. But when you get there, we're going to be known even as we are known. You're going to see some people say, oh, my God, I didn't think they would know God. Well, thank you, Lord. Anyway, you won't spend a lot of time on it because you'll be so glad you got there. But it was, I'm telling you, our emotions come from God, Doc. So, so, so we're going to be shocked. People will be shocked. They're going to say, how are you going to be shocked? No, you will be surprised. Surprise is in God. That's how we got it. Every emotional response we walk in came from God. So don't get surprised. Don't, don't get, feel strange. You feel stuff. What did the Bible say of Jesus? He was in all points tempted, like as we are, yet without sin. He knows it all. They've been through it all. We wouldn't have emotions except God gave them to us. But can we love people for real? <laughs> for real. See? For real means I ain't going to just love them in church when, you know, oh, yeah, pastor, we love everybody. Glory to God. Preach it, pastor. Hallelujah. Love never fails, 1 Corinthians 13, 8. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Love endures all, hopes all, believes all. Love never fails. 1 John 4, he says, he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. How can you say you love God and you hate your brother who you've seen? We say all those things, but do we live those things? makes a difference it's what that's what that's what keeps the church powerless yeah yeah that's that's why that's why we had this stuff to happen in Washington because churches don't preach and live the truth pastors you got pastors who who get up on Sunday mornings and give platitudes but they have no power oh glory to God they can't change nothing changes when people come Glory to God. There, there is no impartation. There's no revelation. And there's no manifestation in their lives. So they just hear about a God that they have no clue who he is. Oh, but wait till I tell you. Glory to God. God is up to something. You need to know that there is nothing that has happened in this earth that has caught God by surprise. Coronavirus didn't catch God by surprise. Not COVID-19, nor the variants. 
Y'all think, oh, they got the vaccines, it's over? It's not over. <laughs> don't, get, don't get lulled into thinking we're going to go back to where it was. I promise you this by the authority of God. We will never, ever go back to what used to be. It won't be that way ever again. We will never have life the way it used to be in the world. The world has been changed. We may do some things that seem like, okay, we got life, but the new life will be for that moment, for that time. It won't last forever either. Jesus is going to return. I was in California. Bless the Lord, I feel it. Thank you, Lord. I was in California, and an apostle called me from North Carolina. He said, Bishop, I need your help. I said, you know him. I won't call his name. I might tell you about him later, but I won't call him right here. And uh, I said, you need my help? Why? He said, I need you to sign on to a petition that we're going to sue the governor of North Carolina. I said, why are you going to sue the governor of North Carolina? He said, because he's closing down the churches. Hmm. I said, okay. I said, so you got a problem with him closing down the churches. He has authority to keep the people safe. And he's not a, he's not a professing man of God. So he's doing what he thinks is best to keep all the people safe. And it just so happens, as a man of God, you fall under his jurisdiction. Help me somebody. So now you're going to, you want me to sign a petition to sue him for doing what he believes is right to keep the people safe. I said, I can't do that. I said, first of all, I don't live in North Carolina no more. I said, I live in California. Oh, you live in California? When did you move to California? I said, see, you, don't, you ain't been keeping in touch with me. You don't know anything about me. You haven't seen me in years. And now you want me to sign. He said, well, if you sign it, you're Bishop Roberts. Your, your name will have a weight to what we're doing. I said, well, I just don't agree. Now, for anybody who... Whatever, I don't agree. Because I said, what you're trying to do is hold on to something that's not going to last. I'm not saying that your building won't be standing. I said, but the way you, what you're trying to do is hold on to the style of church. What you have built up because you got secretaries to pay. You got praise and worship leaders to pay. huh? You got to pay, finish paying for the building. And you built all that on people's giving. Help me somebody. Let's get real. <laughs> get real. What you do, don't have a bill. Don't have a bill. No bills. I, I hear that just as strongly. If you don't have it now, it's coming and wait for it to show up because God is releasing the finances. You will not have any bills. You will not need to raise an offering to pay the bills. The offering you raise will be a blessing to people. This church is going to be a huge giving church. Giving ministry. You know, even, it's not even a regular church. It's going to be a giving ministry. I got, I've gotten to the point, <laughs> Sister Mary Lou, I don't even like the name church. I tell people, I don't go to church. I do ministry. I know church is in the Bible, but you know what? That ain't, that ain't really the word that's in the Greek. <laughs> It's, it's like he says, upon this rock I will build my church. The word is ecclesia. The called out assembly of believers. That's what I'm a part of. I'm a part of the called out. So that means I can preach, I can minister anywhere. I don't need a building to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why you can do it and it work well in a hotel. You might get tired of it, but it can still work. Because you don't need the church building. That's a religious entity. That's a religious structure. And that's what he wanted me to help him hold on to. I said, bro, I don't agree. I said, I said as a matter of fact, if you go on Facebook, Facebook on my page, you'll see a message where I preached against that very thing. He said, really? I said, I sure did. I said, I can show you in scripture where what you're doing is not of God. I said, the seasons have changed. Times have changed. Why do we want to go back to something God's already moved away from? God is always moving. Huh? When the cloud moves, well, they, they don't follow the cloud. Oh, my God. We want the cloud to come back. Come back, come back over here to me. I want this building. I want this building. We weren't tired for this building. You know what? Remember, do you remember, were you there when we bought the land for the church? When we bought all that land and we had it all, the trees 
graded and everything. It was five acres, and we were going to build a structure. And then we ran to a problem with the city. There was the plumbing wasn't coming from one street that we needed to come from. It was coming from another street that we it was like, wait a minute, y'all got to help us with this. They said, we're not going to do that. You have to pay for the plumbing to be rerouted. I said, but it's y'all's street. It's y'all's city. They said, yeah, but that's your property. And I didn't know that up front. I was so upset. Mike, I was dejected. We had been working so hard for so long to try and get a structure. We never could build a structure. That's why I'm in California, because I wasn't supposed to build a structure, right? I didn't know that then. We had about 300 people at one time, and we were rolling, and it looked like we were going to keep growing. And a woman of God said, that's not going to last. She said that in one of our, our like you having a business meeting, it was one of our apostolic board meetings. She came, and we had apostles and prophets and bishops in the room, and she stood up and she said, well, I just have to tell you what God said. That's what I uh, given them authority, you know, to speak whatever the Lord told them. And, uh, and I trusted them, you know, the gift in their lives. I'd known them, each one of them, for years. And she said, she said uh, Bishop, and she said, you're no longer a bishop. You're an apostle. She said, but we'll get to that later. I was like, whoa, whoa, you're just throwing stuff out here. This was in 2001. And she said, this is the same woman. Let me tell you something about it. It's the same woman who spoke the planes crashing into the buildings a 9-11. I heard that in January of 2001. She spoke that and said, we've got to watch out because planes are going to come out of the sky and hit the earth. And uh, when it happened, we were like, whoa. Because you, know? you don't always see everything in the prophetic. You see part. You see in part. You know in part. You probably testify in part, right? So anyway, this same woman said to me, she said, this is, this is, this is not going to last. She said, because the people here are not a part of you and the ministry and the anointing God has given you. They're a part of what it looks like. They're a part of what they think it's going to be. They're a part of the fame. We were on international television, on satellite all over the world. We had the, the hottest radio program in the region. Our ratings were higher than any other person on the radio. People with bigger churches, bigger names, and we were pulling them. It was just coming. We had pastors coming to listen to, listen to our, be a part of our services. I'll say it like that on Sunday mornings. It feels so to say they came to hear me preach, but they, you know, they came to our services on Sunday mornings, and I'd greet them afterwards and say, who are you? Well, I'm Pastor So-and-so. I pastor Sunnyside Baptist Church. That wasn't a real church, but I mean, that's what it was. And I said, well, why are you here? Well, I listen to you on the radio, and, and I want, I, I take your messages, and I go back and preach to other people. I said, well, glory to God. He said, and I tell the people, this came from Bishop Roberts. I said, don't tell them that. Tell them it came from God. You know, you don't need them to know, you know, because we have three or four people come join our church that way. Because they were like, well, if you're getting your stuff from him, we're going to come to our, his church, you know. And so they left their church. I said, well, I tried to tell the preacher, don't tell folks that you're getting it from me. Remind me of the thing Bill Winston said, don't tell them you got it from me. Tell them you got it from God. But she said, it's going to end. And I looked at my wife, and I looked at the other, but none of the other board members co-signed it. They're like, oh, we don't hear that. But I knew her. I had experience with her, you know. I knew her word was sound. I was like, well, I don't want to hear it. You know, sometimes God says some things to us and moves in our ways that we don't want to receive. But we got to say yes. So I said, well, Lord, I'm going to do like Mary. I'm going I'm to put it away till, you know, you, you prove it to be wrong, you know. So uh, what time do you want to get out? I'm, Man. <laughs> What's your name? <laughs> Who said one o'clock? Steven. Ah, that's, I thought it was that brother right there. What's your name? Frank, Frank, you're saved. You, you, come on now, you saved? Yes. Okay, that's what I'm gonna hear. I just see something about you right now. Can you stand up? Just, just stand up. I won't come. I won't come over there to you because I don't feel like I'm need, I'm supposed to. So just stand up. And if you would just reach your hand towards mine, here's what I want to do. The power of God right now is available. There's some healing God wants to do in your body. I don't know what's going on. Hallelujah. But I, I see your organs being remade. There's, there's been a struggle in, in ways that uh, some, of them are, some of them are partly genetic. Some of them are, are, you know, environmentally caused. But God said that the same organ that you think you have to have, he can replace. Amen. And there's a renewal going on in your system. Glory to God. And it's, coming, it's beginning at the cellular level. Glory to God. And every rebellious cell in your body right now come in line in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. God's starting in your blood. Glory to God. Your blood is being re, 
renewed. It's like a transfusion, not from, not from another system, not from dialysis or somebody's, uh, uh, you know, coming and we've got a transfusion. God's changing. He's renewing your cells, just like as if we say we've been born again by the blood of Jesus. Glory to God. When you said yes to Jesus, your healing came with the package. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And the Lord said what you didn't know was he was wait he's been waiting for you to come in agreement with what he's already done. Glory to God. So if you will come in agreement, say amen, say yes, and say I receive it, right now I feel healing. I release healing to your system. And it's not just one thing. Every part of your system is being remade because wholeness is what you've got to walk in right now. Are you hearing me? You receive wholeness. Not, you know, it's, not, it's, not about, it's not about, well, this, you know, my kidney's being healed or, or my blood stream's being, no, wholeness. God, God's not just going to remake what's going on in your organs, but he's going to deal with your mind. Oh, my gosh, I hear God saying, he's going to, yes, he's renewing you completely. Every whit whole in the name of Jesus. Pastor, I don't think, do you lay hands on people? Glory to God. Glory to God. Can I lay my hand on you? Is that all right? Let me just give, in the name of Jesus right now, Father, Frank is whole. I need some agreement in this place right now. The wholeness that comes with the package of Soterian. When, you, when he received Jesus into his life, he received total wholeness. Nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken. Renewal was been, has been waiting on you to receive it. Glory to God. And so today is your day of renewal. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. amen. God bless you, sir. This is your day of renewal. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You're going to, I, I, I don't know if you've been going to a doctor, but you're going to go, you're going to, your doctor's reports are going to change. Glory to God. You're not going to stop going. But the doctor says, what is going on with you? Glory to God. I'm telling you by the authority of God that he's going to start seeing, wow, these numbers have changed. And this system is saying, what is going on? We thought we had to do this for you. We don't have to do it anymore. God is working in you right now. Somebody give God some glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know this happens. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 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 Shift. Somebody say shift. Uh-huh. Glory to God. Because I don't even remember what I was talking about. I just, I heard, I heard Stephen, and I looked at Frank. And when I looked at, you know, you know how it works. When I looked at him, I saw something, and the Holy, Holy Spirit pointed something out. Put that out. And, and it's all of God. Hallelujah. It's all of God. All of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, there are miracles. The Spirit of God is resting in miraculous provision in this place. I mean, some of these chairs that aren't set in because of, you know, the distancing and stuff, you know, don't fool yourself. People are going to sit in chairs and they're going to get healed. Because you pray. Because you pray. Glory to God. It's not, it's not worthless. It's not in vain because you, you, you enter in and you, and you call in a presence, an atmosphere. You create a, a, an atmosphere of the miraculous. And you got, and you got a, a man like this with all that love coming out of his eyes. We call him tears because his body can't contain him. The love is overflowing. Glory to God. With expectation and anticipation. Ha, for the possibility of God's power being released. Yeah. Somebody say glory. glory. Well, that's what we want, mama. We want the power of God to be replaced, released in this place. Yes. Amen. Yes. Can I hold your hand? Can I hold your hand? I'm going to hold your, your pants. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Don't take it lightly, y'all in here. Hallelujah. The number of your days, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I <laughs> will perform. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Be strengthened in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Be strengthened in Jesus' name. The angels of the Lord, I see the angels surrounding you right now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you know they minister to you on a regular basis. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I, 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 let me just say this. Mark chapter 13, and this, uh, the whole chapter, and, and I'm not going to read it all. But in that chapter, okay, the Bible says that in that day, Jesus said in that day, they, said, they, they, talked about Je- they talked to Jesus and asked him what would the signs of these things be. And he said in that day, he said, you will have many, many wars and rumors of wars. And you'll have many tribulations going on. You can read it for yourself. Mark, uh, Mark chapter, uh, what did I say, uh, 13, 1 through 37. And, and he, says, he says, but don't, don't, get, don't get flustered. Don't, don't worry because these things must be. They must be. That's, that's what we we're going to. When I talked to that preacher, I said, why are you getting in the way of God? He said, what do you mean I'm getting in the way of God? I said, you're trying to hold on to a building which represents a mindset and a ritualism of religion that God is no longer with. I said, you're trying to hold on to something that you feel like is a part of your uh, American existence. You don't even see it. As a, as, a, as, as a citizen of the kingdom, you see it as a citizen of the United States. That we can worship freely. I have no problem with you worshiping the way you worship. But I got surprised because I've known him in the past. And I said, that's, that's not what you used to espouse. You know? Uh, so listen, if we're not moving with God, we become the opposition. We're like, we're like unto Peter. When Jesus said, I am going to go to the cross, basically he said, I'm going to die. And Peter said, no, Lord, you're not going to do this while I'm alive, you know. And he said, you don't know what's getting ready to happen to me. You don't really understand it. He said, before the cock crows, huh? before, before the sun rises, the cock is going to crow, right? You're going to hear three crows because you're not ready. You're not ready for the reality of what's getting ready to happen. You want to maintain a status quo. You want to maintain a system that is no longer applicable to the plan of God. While we try to hold on to things, listen, all that's been up, uprooted and an upheaval that's happened, let it go. God's not moved on. God, God is constantly moving. You know what he's trying to do? Catch you up. Catch you up. I was in, and this is part of, part of my issue, uh, you know, of change in my own life. I was, I was a part of a group called the International Association of Apostles and Prophets. Okay? So I, you know, would congregate with them and, and uh, be a part of meetings. Just like he go to, you know, they go to the Southwest Believers Convention, I'll go there. You know? Because I, even though I love the Word, I, I, you know, spent all those years in the Word, God was moving me apostolically. Okay, so I was staying with the flow he was leading me to. But we had a meeting that, you know, 100 people, 100 of us were called to. And I think 50 showed up on Zoom early in the year, early last year. And, uh, okay, Lord, I didn't know all this. But anyway, um, and there's a, there's a board in that group. And uh, I'm not going to say no names in that one, okay? I'm not going to say no names in that one. Because I know some of you heard of them. But... In that group, they were saying, okay, what do you hear? What do you hear? What do you hear? And the 10 of them in that board. And they were all giving out what they heard. Okay? Now, there was two women in, in, in the group. One was the chairperson of the group who she called the meeting together. And uh, then another one was, none of them were, were insignificant, but the other one was a, was a female who was not one of the prominent names. She was there because of her husband and her father-in-law, okay? She was there by association, but she still was called of God. And so when they got around, to, they kept going around, going around, and everybody said, well, in April, COVID-19 is going to be a memory. It's going to be gone. We're, we're not going to have to deal with that again, you know? It's going to be gone. And, and I'm just telling you, I didn't hear that. I didn't hear I, I started praying, and I had told the bishop in California you know, hey, we need, to, we need to hunker down in the presence of God because this is getting ready to shake some things up. That a lot of lives are going to be lost and things are going to change. And so we went to prayer. 
And he called, before they shut down the church out there, he brought his whole, he, he said, we're going to come in, we're just going to pray. We're going to let out a wail before the Lord. You know, the Bible says, call for the wailing women. We're just going to, because we, we don't know the answer. We just said, God, because I didn't see this for 20, 2020. I, I thought, you know, God, and he did do some things, but not what I thought was going to happen. And I couldn't find anybody who said 2020 happened the way they thought was going to happen. So, so this came out of, just seemingly out of nowhere. But here God said, let's just pray. Let's just pray. And so eventually I started, you know, I've got a prayer group that I pray every week. I spend so many hours on, uh, I guess, it's social media platforms with, in prayer during the week that it wears me out. So when I got here, for, I was tired. I had been up all night. I had been up several nights during that week praying, praying, praying. Plus I pray at night. So anyway, we got, they got around to her and she said, and, and she did not try to contradict anybody. She said, this is what I'm hearing. She said, what I'm hearing is what we're dealing with is like a serpent with many heads. And she said, the first head is what we call COVID-19. And she said, that head is spitting fire all over the earth. A plague is coming out of its mouth. And she said, it's going to impact the whole earth. This was in March, okay? This was late February, early March, because they said, most of them were saying it's going to be over by April. And they were saying, we had, I had a dream, and I saw this, and it's going to be over by April. I'm like, okay, you know, Lord, because I'm always asking God, all these folks are saying this, you know, am I missing you? What am I missing? Because I pray, why don't you tell me? And the Lord said, just be quiet, just listen. So I'm listening. And, and then she said, she said, about the time we think we get that one under control, another head of that many-headed serpent is going to rise up and begin to attack the earth again. She said, we will subdue the first one for a while, and then the next one will come out, and we'll go after that. And she said, about the time we get one under, another one will come up. She said, what's happening is God is addressing systems. God is addressing systems. And she said, if we don't address Systems in prayer, systems in our reality, in our structure. She said, we have systems operating in the church that are not of God. And she said, if we don't address the things in the church that are not of God, there is no hope for the world. She said, the church, through the power of Jesus Christ, is the hope for the world. But we got to deal with stuff going on in the church. And she says it's going to take us addressing this and then standing as the church. And let me give you this scripture before I forget it. Glory to God. Uh, 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 Matthew, glory to God. Uh, I think 11 and 12, you Jesus talks about, because I'm dealing with this area right now, so we're just moving right along. And Matthew 11 and 12, Jesus talks about the kingdom of God. He said the kingdom from the time of John the Baptist until now. John had been sent to prison, and, and, and Jesus was out ministering, and John said, John said, uh, uh, he sent two of his people and two of his disciples and said, go see if this is the man. Go see, give me, bring me a report back. Glory to God. And they went out and, and, and they came to Jesus and said, are you the one or should we look for another? And Jesus said, well, go back and tell John what you see. The blind receive their sight. Glory to God. The lame walk. The dead are raised. Glory to God. He said, he said give him a report based on what you see. Glory to God. And then he said to the people who were standing around, yes, John's in jail, but what did you go to the wilderness to see? Why did you go out there to John if you didn't expect to see somebody in the wilderness? He was not a man in fine raiment. Glory to God. He was dressed in uh, bear skins and animal skins. He was suited for his situation. Help me somebody. He was anointed to be the prophet in the wilderness. So he was a reed, hallelujah, blowing in the wind, hallelujah. He didn't look like the king, like Jesus didn't put himself up to be king. Glory to God. Oh, no, no, no. He's suited for his situation. What God told me to tell you is the problem of most of us is we don't want to walk in what we're suited for. I've had to accept the fact that I am not the guy who's going to be all over the television anymore on international satellites, glory to God, because I refuse to work in that reality. That reality requires you to get stable somewhere, build a, an empire, so to speak. Uh, you need praise and worship people. You need music people. You need staff. You need all this so that when you get on TV, you come on with strength and power. And everybody says, oh, I like that. That's not what I'm called for. Hallelujah. I, I'm consecrated as a bishop, but I'm assigned to the apostolic. Glory to God. I'm assigned to be traveling like I am. I'm assigned to do more traveling than I am. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So I told somebody, they said, well, you're a bishop. I said, all you see is bishop, bishop, bishop. 
Let me tell you something about a bishop. A bishop is an administrative title. It's an administrative office. Do I have administrative responsibilities? You betcha. I got a lot of them. I didn't ask for them. They were thrust upon me. They came after me. Hallelujah. People still come to me. I have people in other countries. Glory to God. I was on Friday night with our ministry in, in the United Kingdom, Coventry, the United Kingdom. And they are power-packed people. Glory to God. And they can't wait to get here. Because I talk about you. And Bishop and Pamela says, well, I've got to come where you go. We're coming. In 2021, things will change and we are traveling. We're coming. I said, amen. amen. <laughs> what am I going to say? <laughs> Hold up a second, bro. <laughs> if they speak faith, I got to speak faith. Come on. <laughs> Glory to God. And so, 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 so. I, I, I don't mind. I don't reject being a bishop. I try to just not be it, but, you know, when you have people calling you out who never met you and, you know, crazy stuff start happening, you'll be like, oh, man, that's how these prophets work. And I'm one of them, but, yeah, I know how that's why they work. You back there in the gold coat, back there, you, you, yeah, I'm talking to you. Ain't nobody else in the gold coat back there but you. You know, you got to wear the hat of a bishop. You got to come on up here so I can pray for you. I'm like, dang, you know. I, you know, I knew what it meant. I knew what the stigma was. I knew what folks, you know, they get and they want to be fat cats. You know, I've never wanted to be a fat cat. I might get fat, but I ain't trying to be a fat cat. <laughs> so, you know, it's just what it is. But when God released me into the apostolic, I understood that he was releasing me to the nations. He was releasing me to places where other folks won't go. Other people don't want to go. Or people don't see the need. Right. Glory to God. But there's a need. As long as the, hey, listen, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. But violent men. Take it by force. If you read that out of the New Living, somebody got the New Living. Could you, you good at did that, Pastor. New Living uh, translation, uh, 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 was it Matthew? Is that what I said, Mark? Mark, uh, is it yeah. Matthew 11 and 12? Thank you very much. New Living translation, that one's really good. There, there's an assault that's happening. You got it? Glory to God. Oh, he got it on the board. Yeah. And from the time John the Baptist began preaching until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully. Advances. Yes. And violent people are attacking it. That's it. Forcefully advancing. We sit still. We think coming to church is what this is about. But people are out there dying. They might be gay. They, they, they might have HIV. Huh? They might have COVID-19. They might be a different color. They might be a Democrat or Republican. Come on, somebody. But they need to be saved. Yes. We carry the power. Yes. Violent men, we're advancing forcefully. Are we? Are we sitting still? You, do you know what Bishop and Pamela said to me? He says, my bishop, you are an example to me. He got a building over there. He says, I'm leaving my building. I said, no, bro, don't leave your building. If God don't tell you to leave that building, don't leave that building. He says, no, we will own it, but we're not going to have church in the building anymore. He says, when we come to America to assist you, we're going to buy a tent. He says, and we will travel all over the nations with a tent. And we will call the people to the place of power. I said, amen. I come in alignment and agreement with that. My amen is with that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Not that I'm against church buildings, because there's great things that can be done in the church building. But if your mindset is the building is the priority, you've missed God. He said, that we got to be for we got to advance forcefully. Do you know that the Bible says, he says, he says, uh, when he says he calls out the ecclesia, in Matthew, he said he calls out the ecclesia, he says that I say also unto thee that thou art Peter. Hallelujah, the, the, the stone. And upon this rock, he wasn't talking about him. He's talking about the revelation of him being Christ. Who do men say that I am? He says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. He says, flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you, but my father which is in heaven. He said, and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter. And upon this rock, and you are going to be part of the rock. 
my man. You are going to be part of the rock because the rock is growing in you, glory to God. And there's a hardening and there's a toughening that's coming to you. Yes, you can still shed tears, but I see you breaking forcefully the iron of the enemy that's binding people and the chains that are binding them, and you will break it forcefully. Hallelujah. Because you're advancing, glory to God, in the kingdom, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. We sit back and we say, oh my, the devil's after me. Or the, devil's, the gates of hell shall not prevail. Hey. We're supposed to forcefully bust up his stuff. Yes. We sit back and let it happen. Or we, gotta, or we, fight, we fight defensively. Oh, well, the enemy's after me, but I got the armor of God. You need to use a sword. You need to use a rock. You need to use whatever you can get your hands on. When my daddy told me when I was 13, he said, son, you're going to be the smallest thing I got. You're not going to grow with the rest of your brothers. I got four, four other brothers, and I'm the shortest one. Now, he talked junk about that earlier. But you know what? I was saved when nobody was saved. <laughs> preaching when nobody was preaching. Come on, somebody. I may be small, but I got the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Yeah. I am more than a conqueror. Yeah. Glory to God. I am not afraid of the animal's devices. Yeah. Let me tell you something about, let me, let me tell you, let me give you a reality revelation. When I was on my death bed on the floor, I felt the liberty of life. I didn't care anymore. I was, nothing, could, nothing could make me afraid. I thank God for the life he had given me. And I said, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. I, have, I felt like Paul. I fought the good fight. Glory to God. I've been through hell, but I fought the good fight. And you can take me now. You know what? It's like the Lord says, I ain't paying you no mind. <laughs> but I felt, my, I felt a release in my, on the inside, you know. I was upset that he wouldn't take me, but I was like, I'm free. I don't care. I get on the plane. I get so excited about loving the plane, loving to fly. Oh, Lord, I want to fly. You can just take me on up, you know. <laughs> take me on up, you know. They can land and my body can be there, but take me on up. I like it up here. I'm still here. <laughs> he ain't took me yet. Glory to God. And you know what he said to me? It is not your portion to die on a plane. I said, well, then amen. Hallelujah. But you, I, I, I believe this in Jesus' name. When it's time for me to go, he'll tell me. And I will call all of my bloodline together. And I will speak the blessing over them. I said, God, you did it for Abraham and for Isaac and Jacob. I want that blessing. Our daddy did it for us. I said, I want to do that. I want, I want to know it's time to go. Okay, well, y'all better get here because I'm leaving on Friday. <laughs> Lord told me I'm leaving. So come on so I can pray for you, speak over you, and see you one more time. And I said, glory to God, and I'll see you on the other side. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. But we've got to use those tools, those things, because we have been, what, prepared, purposed. God didn't do anything without a purpose. I know the thoughts, Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the thoughts I think towards you. Thoughts are good and not evil, huh? Give you hope in your final outcome, huh? Because you are going to accomplish my will. You won't leave the earth without doing what God planned for you to do. I didn't get a whole lot of amen, but I got some. Glory to God. Frank, say amen. amen. That's the man I need to say amen right now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right, here's this, and I'm wrapping this up because I'm going to tell you, it's just, just a lot. Glory to God. I don't know why he gave me that, that love stuff early, but, you know, there you go. But here, we need to know that we have been prepared, purposed, and empowered. That's why we fight. The only way our fight is going to allow us to win is Number one, we have had an undeniable experience with the existence of God, glory to God, that is able to sustain us through any present or future difficulty. Number two, we understand that the fight is not against the flesh. There is not a person, a human being in the earth that is our enemy. Not one. I don't care if they call him the Antichrist. I don't care what preacher they say it is or what denomination they say it is. They said it was Barack Obama. Well, he's the Antichrist. So, I mean, you know, it, we say, people say a lot of stuff. Yes. 
You know? I, man, help me, Lord. I don't want to go into all that. Shift! <laughs> People are literally expecting folks to get executed and, and, you know, and martial law and all this stuff because they believe false prophets. And that's what's in the Word. False prophets. In, in, in Mark 13, 1 through 37, he talks about false prophets. People who say stuff that they didn't even know God. Because they got a title where they say they're, they're, they're this or that other. you gotta, you got to have a witness on the inside. I can say I'm a prophet, but if you don't have a witness on the inside, then you better, leave, you better stay away from me. I'm the first one to tell you because I don't even ask God. I said, Lord, please, I don't need to prophesy. Please don't use it. You know what he told me one day, Mary Lou? I, I got to, um, uh, never mind, I won't say his name. Anyway. I was going to tell him he know, he know the guy. But anyway, this guy kept begging me, begging me, begging me to come preach for him. And I said, you don't want me to come preach for you. You don't want me to come preach for you. He, he, was, he was my wife at the time. He was, he was her godfather. And, you know, we were connected. And he was like, no, nah, man, son, I need you to come preach for me. I said, I said Papa, you know, I'm going to say his name. No, you don't need me to come preach for you. And uh, he said, wow, you, you don't like me? I said, no, it's not even that. I said, I just don't believe that's going to please God. And uh, he said, so... You're too good to preach for me then. I said, oh, see, you had to go there. I said, okay. I said, you want me to come preach for you? I said, then you got to know that I'm going to say whatever God tells me. I said, you okay with it? He said, yeah, man, I know you. You say whatever God tells you. I said, now, just to make sure I'm okay, and I told him just, just to make sure I'm okay, I'm going to bring more people with me than you will have in your church. And he said, he looked at me strange, like, why are you doing that? Because I'm thinking, you know, you pastor some hood folks. And I can make some people mad. And I've heard of folks fighting in churches. I'm bringing some backup. <laughs> may not have to use them. I was serious. I was serious, man. I may not have to use them. I didn't tell him that. I said, no, I just need that for support. I need to make sure I got enough people to support what I hear him say. He said, oh, man, yeah, come fill our place up. You know, I'd have brought big bro like that. Said, come on, man, let's go. Took Big Dave. You know, when Big Dave go walking in with you, everybody's come subject. Big Dave was six foot eight, 285 pounds. All, all strong. He coming off that weight, man. You haven't seen him on Facebook, but he coming on down. So he wouldn't have made that. I needed Big Dave. We walked in. I walked in with five preachers, five men. We walked into that section, and he was like, wow, you did bring your people. I said, sure did. And the rest of them were filing in the front door. When we got out, there was time for me to go out in the, into the, in the sanctuary. I think he had 25 people. I had 45. And I was comfortable then. And I'm like, I can go now, Lord, because it's okay. And this, this fits with what, I, what I'm talking about right here. They didn't even see this one coming. See, God does stuff like that. When I got up, everybody in the church had a title. Everybody. And most of them were evangelists. Evangelist Robin, what you got to say? Evan evangelist Marshall, what you got to say? I ain't actually. He just, everybody was evangelist. You know what evangelist is? You can call somebody, give somebody an, an authoritative office, and they don't back it. They can't back it up. That means you lying. And if they receive it, they're walking in the lie. Okay? So I was like, well, Lord, I had a message. Just like I had the message. And the Lord said, deal with it. I said, I don't want to do stuff, Lord Jesus. This is his church. And the Lord said, no, you, you, you tell him. And I said, Lord, why do I always have to be the one to make people mad? Because I'm going to make them mad. He said, because I can trust you to tell the truth. He said, not everybody would deal with it. And I was like, well, then thank you that these people came with me. And I said, just simply, got up, and I said, everybody in here who is an evangelist, stand on your feet. And I can tell you, nobody in my church stood up. That's not even a title I used. Why? Everybody's supposed to have the gift of evangelism. Come on. Everybody's supposed to be winning souls. Why would I have to call somebody? I mean, you know, evangelists are in the church, right? Evangelists, prophets, pastors, teachers, you know, preachers, you know, apostles. That's all in the church. That's all fivefold ministry. I don't need to call it out. But because that's all they were calling out, I said, everybody in here who's on call, stand up. And they, a bunch of them stood up. The ones that didn't stand up were a deacon or the, pre or the preachers. 
And I was like, dog, everybody else was standing up. So out of, out of the 25, 20 of us stood up. And I said, okay, everybody who, I said, y'all know what an evangelist is, right? Yeah, 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 everybody knows what an I said, so everybody who has won somebody to the Lord this week, sit down. Nobody sat down. I said, okay, everybody who has won somebody to the Lord this month, sit down. Nobody sat down. I'm like, okay. Anybody who has won somebody to the Lord in the last year, sit down. One person sat down. I said, but all y'all are evangelists. And you say you know what it is, what the title is, what the office is. I said, but you are not evangelists. I said, because if you proclaim the gospel, somebody, somebody is going to respond. And not only that, the Bible tells us in Mark and Luke that when the sower sows the seed, some falls by the wayside, some falls on stony ground, some falls in the thorns, but the other falls in good ground. You should at least get a 25% return on your seed sowing. I said, so that means you ain't telling nobody or you only tell one person all year. I said, something wrong with y'all having these titles. And I turned around and looked at him. I said, you're responsible for them being out of order. You pastor this people and they don't walk in what you call them, then this needs to be dealt with. I said, this church is only consisting of people who are related or they just like your music. And he was a master musician. I said, but they're not doing anything to please God. And he stood up and he said, I'm guilty. I said, God must be working. Because I told Big Dave, I had already told Big Dave, you be watching, man. You be watching. Because you can't stand behind me, you know. I had a couple of preachers that, you know, they were preachers, but I didn't trust them as much as I trusted Big Dave, you know. You know, somebody jumped me, man, you know. You got to know where you're preaching, who you're preaching to, you know. That's the reality. I don't care what y'all think it ain't all. All this ain't all. Praise the Lord, brother. No, 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 no. Some folks don't want to hear what you have to say. And you, listen, look at me. You see me? I wasn't any him saying it. it. Wasn't him, big, bro, big, big, big boy, little brother. It was, it was little older brother, smallest of the five. Yet God was able to communicate with them. Now, did they change? I don't think so. But he at least admitted he was guilty. You see what I'm saying? That's empowered. Look, we, we, we are prepared, purposed. Our purpose is to change lives, to reach the lost. We're empowered we have all the things of God, and we got to remember, we're not fighting a man. So how are we going to fight? We're going to fight with 2 Corinthians, was it 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Huh? Casting down imaginations. Imaginations. There's imaginations going on all over the United States and in the world. People are believing any and everything. The devil is, the, the spirit of deceit is just going crazy. And people are eating it up because they rather, the Bible says, they rather believe the lie than the truth. So you know what? When I pray with my prayer groups, or not, I said, let's pray God release truth. Let's pray for truth to be established. Let's pray for people's ears to be unstopped and they will receive the truth because until they get to receiving the truth, they're going to keep believing the lie. And I don't care who you are. I don't care how great your ministry is on TV in all the choir and everything singing through all social media or whatever. You're not going to change people's lives. You're just going to entertain those believers who don't come to church. But that cannot be what we do. We are called to save the lost. No matter who they are. And no matter where we have to go. We got to get them. You know, you know, I'm hearing two songs. I'm getting ready to wrap this up because I'm going to speak this word over you. You know, Andre Crouch wrote a song back in the 70s. So tell them, even if they don't believe you, just tell them. Even if they won't receive you, just tell them. Tell them for me that I love them. And I came to let them know. Hallelujah. You just got to tell them. You got to tell them. And then the, the, the Imperials, I love, see, that, see that's a, I'm a child of that 70s, right? The Imperials wrote a song said, Lord of the Harvest, 
Place your fire in me. Servant, you need now, servant, I will be. Huh? Give me the eyes of your spirit, your heart of compassion to know. Wherever you may lead me, Lord of the harvest, I'll go. See the fields, white and ripe, ripe and white as snow. Up from the seeds of faith, we planted long ago. Harvest is ready. You can tell that by watching all this craziness he told you not to watch on television. Do you watch it? Yes, I do. Okay. But, he, you know, you don't need to be watching if you're not solid and ground. You can deal with all this foolishness. Because while foolishness is going on, you know what I'm doing? Praying for the president. Before and after the inaugura inauguration, I'm praying for the one for the last four years I've been praying for. And you know what? I started praying for him before he got elected. You know why? Because the Lord told me he was going to get elected. So I started praying for him in 2015. Because I told, I told people, I told my sons, I told other preachers, I said, he's getting ready to get live. And I told them, I said, the Lord said, prepare your life for the unusual. Embrace unusual times. And I believe we have been through some unusual times. But here's the deal. There will be no more usual as we know it. Here's the word the Lord told me to give you and encourage you with this word, okay? This is knowledge, the Lord says, that you already have heard of me. It has already been released through the word. It has been declared. It has been, it has been chronicled in the word, and my scribes have written it, glory to God, and it has been heralded out of the mouths of prophets of old that Jesus, who went away, is coming again. He said, not only is he coming again, but he must come at the conclusion of things that were prophesied. So we have to know, we have to know that there will be no going back. In the days ahead, we will keep forging ahead. We will keep moving forward, and we will keep moving forward as a mighty army of God, victorious over the things of the enemy, glory to God, and reaping the harvest to the glory of God. There will not be untouched souls. We will touch the souls. We will minister to their hearts. And they will either receive or reject the truth that is being released. But the truth will be accompanied by demonstration and manifestation. Miracles and power, signs and wonders shall accompany the truth. And they will walk in the truth. Many will still hold to deception because their hearts have been hardened. But many who you would think would not believe shall be turned, their hearts shall be turned softly to the things of God. And they will run into the place of power. They will run unto the name of the Lord. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous run into it and they are saved. Amen. So prepare your hearts. Prepare your hearts. Prepare your hearts. Prepare your heart for the reception of my power will begin within your heart heart it will not begin in your eyes it will not begin in your ears it will not begin in your flesh it will begin in your heart and I shall cause a well of anointing to rise from within your heart and a passion shall grow and a hunger shall grow for the things of God that can only be found in my presence and in my presence you will find a fullness of joy in the hard times, in difficult times. But because you exist in my presence, the joy of the Lord will be your strength. And you shall be like a mighty army. And in your region, I have set before you leaders such as these people here today. I have set people in every region to lead the army. The army to go forth on the instructions of the Holy Spirit. Strategies, gifts and anointings to touch the lost. And many of you who think in your heart or the enemy would speak to your mind and say it is past time in your life. You are too old. The Lord would say to them the enemy lies because that's what he's called to do. He's literally called to lie. He was a deceiver from the beginning. God created him knowing he would lie. So all he's doing is fulfilling his purpose. But know in your
your heart, that I will lengthen your days. I will strengthen your heart. And if I strengthen your heart, I will strengthen your flesh. And the number of your days I will fulfill. And hear the Lord say, I have not invested in you to lose you. I, know, I always re receive a return on my investment. And my, invest and my investments are sound and strong. And the fruit that you bear, that fruit shall remain. Somebody give God some glory. <laughs> Pastor Tommy. Quiet, 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 quiet. Come here, Bishop, don't, Apostle, don't leave. I want y'all to learn something. Don't, yeah, set that down, please. I want y'all to learn something. Learn how to read the presence of the Spirit. Yes. Everything doesn't require applause. Whew. The Spirit of the Lord is speaking. Let it resonate in your heart first. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm not... I'm just trying to, I want you, I want you to understand. He, you don't, come on, let's pray in the Holy Ghost for a minute. I don't talk to him like that. Okay, listen to what I'm saying. All right, listen. He and I haven't had, I don't know, the last time we talked was before Christmas, I know. Had a conversation. And I was supposed to, we were supposed to get back together and never did. Do you know the prophetic word that the Lord has spoken over? Have you heard it over this church? Not that I can remember. Okay. He doesn't know this. He doesn't know you. I ain't had no conversation with him. And he sure don't know you. Okay. I just met you last week myself. <laughs> Glory to God. The prophetic word that the Lord spoke over this church back in September is advancing the kingdom. Glory advancing the kingdom. Advancing. Glory to God. The reason why I say that. And, and, and I want you to understand my heart. Please hear my heart. We have been called out for such a prophetic work that every individual is important. Every last one of us is important. And I know this. This I know. That the devil is working overtime to pull some of you away. He, he, he did that to all churches all across the globe. But he did it to our local church, with, the, with, with many of you know what took place, transpired in May of this year. And the Lord spoke a word to my wife and I, and I wrote it down, and I'm going to talk about it next Sunday. And that is, the, the, I, I almost need to pull it up, but he said this about the devil. He said, if you don't get this, then you're not going to get anything. There's three things about the devil that we have to understand that should be... Uh, Prominent in us. Number one, we should be committed. Committed. That's what, that's what evangelism is. You committed. Yeah, yeah. If you're going to be an evangelist, you got to yeah. be committed. Yeah, right? Amen. The Amen. other Amen. thing, my wife has got her eyes closed, but <laughs> what's the other thing? The other, I know the last one, but I'm trying not to forget the second one. Thank you. What's the other one? This, thank you. She got it. Because we've been talking about all the way back on the flight. We got to be organized. The devil is committed. He's committed. Yes, he is. He's committed to send you and I to hell. Yes. He's committed. You, you ain't going because you know him. You know Jesus. Yeah. But there's a lot of people who don't know. That's what, that's, yeah. that's what this is all about. Yeah. Yeah. And because he is committed, he understands that he's got to be this. He's got to be organized. And as, as the church, not just life point, but as the church of the living God, we have not been organized. We work against each other more than we work for each other. And the last thing we got to do, we got to be disciplined. That's why I told you not to put your hands together. There is a time and appropriateness for praise and the clapping of hands. It is not. This prophetic word, he didn't know. He doesn't know any of this stuff. When I picked him up, what, yesterday or day before yesterday, whatever. I got him to his to his, his place of residence just so I could get him rested and all that. We we don't we don't have these conversations. You know why I don't bother him with that? Because I want him to speak as an oracle of God. Jesus. 
and, 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 and this whole thing that's going on right now in the body of Christ, we're, we're, we're in a great place. This is a great place. In the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of a new president, in the mi new, middle of a new administration, this is the best possible place we could be. Amen. Somebody said, well, I didn't, want, I didn't want this to happen. That's the whole point. It ain't for what you want. It's for what God, God wants. wants. Yes. God wants a people who will violently enter in and take back what the devil has yes. stolen from us. He has stolen and tried his best to steal our identity. He has shut us up and made us be quiet. And you know what? I ain't, I'm not, I'm not going to be silent anymore. Yes. Yes. I got to pray for you. Thank you Jesus. We're going to. We're going to pray for him first, then we're going to receive an offering for him second. So you can prepare. I've already got mine prepared. I got it on my phone. I